Hey guys, thanks for coming back. Now, have you ever wanted to drive a Lambo or a rally car, or a trophy truck, a monster truck, the Hoonicorn, drift car, whatever? I'm sure you have. Of course you have. That's why we play racing games, right? But there's one thing that's missing, and I think that is the feeling of actually driving the car, and it's probably due to using one of these. Now, they're tons of fun, but I have decided that I need a sim rig, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, today I'm going to be putting together a super cheap sim rig, um, sim racing rig. It's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And I finally just got the kick in the pants to do it and started putting it together uh, for as cheap as possible, like usual. Okay, now sim rigs are pretty much the epitome of any racing game. For me, there's so many cars that I want to play with that I want to drive, things I want to try like drifting and crazy four-wheel drive stuff that I'm never going to be able to do all this stuff or at least not be able to afford to do all this stuff. So if I could build a sim rig and simulate this as best as I can, I thought that would be great. So anyway, let's show you where we started here. I know I've been doing a bad job of filming my stuff that I built. Like you might've noticed some stuff in here, uh, let's call it my YouTube studio, has changed quite a bit. Um, I was on this, this table actually that's in front of me was my desk for the last couple years or whatever. And until I decided to actually make a desk, which is what I did back there. And I did not film a video on that, which I should have done, but I didn't. So we're gonna go back a little bit here and show you what gave me the kickstart that I needed to actually get this thing going. Okay, so the new desk setup, pretty much all I want, I wanted more room. I wanted to be able to have three spots to game or, or do whatever. Um, the first one being where my daughter's computer slash my backup computer is. Uh, my main computer in the middle and then the other spot just for whatever. This little table here I used to have on my computer and I liked the height of it so I built the table to that height thinking I could just move this wherever I wanted it to be as an extension of the desk. Now the desk is super basic. It's just um, cheap OSB, you know, Home Depot, whatever and a lot of it's just scraps from pallets and stuff. I have two by fours mounted to the wall and then I mounted, the, I ran a two by two frame. Sorry for the focus here. Two by two frame, down the whole thing, mounted the OSB to it. And then I put another piece of plywood underneath here just as a shelf to hold all the cords. Two by fours down to the wall. Um, it's 24 inches deep, 10 feet long. Plenty of room to do whatever I want to do on it. I put my old cup holder there. And then this is just like $2 contact paper from Walmart to hide the OSB. And it works really well. Okay, so now I've got three spots at my new desk. And so you need three chairs. Uh, the two that I had before, whatever. And then my buddy begged me to take this chair. And that's where this started. So let's talk about that awesome chair. So I got this chair for free. And my plan was, after sitting in it, realizing it was so terrible, mind you, I had to weld it and put some wood underneath it, fix a bunch of junk that is just broken, and the chair had hardly ever been used. But uh, I was gonna replace this with just a regular bucket seat from a car. So I went to the junkyard to find a seat to replace this, and that's when I decided I was just gonna make um, a whole sim rig after I found the seat. But when I went there, I had a couple things in mind. I wanted to find a seat that looked nice and that was comfortable. Uh, B, that was clean, and three, I wanted it to be no power, so manual rails and everything. It's gonna be the easiest way to have it adjustable on the rig. And I was actually really surprised with what I came up with, uh, which was this. Ended up being a great buy. This is out of a, I don't know what year, I probably should, but I don't, but it's a Mazda 3 seat, uh, newer, obviously. It's all black leather, it's in great shape. There's no rips or anything. Everything works on it. It does have an airbag over here, but I'll just kind of ignore that. And it's really comfy. It's like, it's what I like to call kind of cuppy. And uh, it kind of feels like a racing seat. And the best thing of all is that this was a total of $15. So we need three things for this. The chair, which I already showed you. And then we need a wheel. It's probably the second and most important thing of all this. So. Naturally, I went to offer up and I found this. That's not what I was going for. This comes off. This is gonna go on later. This is a Logitech Momo. Uh, they made these a few years ago. It's full force feedback, which 
I, it had to be force feedback. If it wasn't force feedback, I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, it comes with the pedals, just gas brake. I'd like to have a clutch, but we'll figure out that later. This was 40 bucks, 45 bucks on offer up. Uh, I couldn't find anything else closer or cheaper at that price, and I wanted to get this thing done, so this is what I ended up with. Um, the one thing about this is that it only goes yay far, which I think will be all right for the most part. When you're driving, you don't go much past this or this anyway. So anyway, this is the wheel I picked up for 45 bucks. And the last thing that we need to do is, the third part is to put it all together. Uh, that's the part of the rig that I can build. I did not want to use metal or anything like that. I have scrap wood all over the place. So I have a pile of scrap and we're gonna put this pile of scrap together and make a base for this thing. Okay, uh, anyway, sorry for the camera angles and all that, but I've got a pile of scrap wood down there as well as my daughter who's helping me with this. This is Scarlett. She has been my cameraman for most of this video. But anyway, these are all just from, mostly from pallets, leftovers at work, whatever. I did not buy any of this. Uh, a lot of it's pre-cut at this point. It was just easier that way. Um, there's a couple pieces that I need. I'm gonna cut those right now. So let's go cut those. All right, we are in my shop now. Pardon the mess and the selfie cam here. Uh, we're gonna grab some scraps over here, which are old pallets and stuff like that. And there's my 54. We are gonna cut them on the obviously wrong tool for the job, bandsaw. And, uh, Let's get that done. Well, of course, the switch for the bandsaw would be broken, so this is how we turn it on. And here we go. Now I have a sweet angle on here, not only decorative, but also the only way it'll fit through the bandsaw. Okay, now that we've got these ones, uh, let's talk about putting them together, where I got my dimensions. So it's pretty basic, really. I wanted this to feel like a real car, so I went out to my wife's car. Uh, it's kind of a sporty car. It's got a turbo, it's not a race car. But anyway, I went out there and I got my basic dimensions, put the seat where I wanted it, where it was gonna feel nice, and then I'm building this uh, in front of my computer to match those dimensions as best I can. So, and what I came up with was this is just a two by six on end, and I've already put that together. It is, let's see, it's 19 inches wide, which is the width of the rails of the seat that I'm gonna be putting on it. And it's gonna be adjustable for, you know, different people wanna use it or whatever. Um, we'll start putting it together. I keep losing my microphone. Uh, so the length I ended up with, about 52. Again, just do whatever works for you. And all of my dropped pieces, all of my two by fours, where does this go? I don't know, we'll come back to that. But anyway, uh, so I've got, these guys are cut at 16 to just go as my cross braces. Again, this is a two by six. The cat is on the stool and in the way. Sorry, Zoe. So let's start screwing some of these in. Looks like I've got another kid coming to help. This is Veronica. Can you say hi? I'm making a base for my for my race car game. And can I watch? Can you watch I, me build it? And I want to watch you race the cars on it. Oh, okay. Well, I probably won't be racing the cars on it for a while. Definitely not before bedtime. Uh, the cool beveled pieces that I showed you, these guys here, are going to go right here. I'm actually going to turn it this way so you can see a little bit better what's going on here. And to attach those, we're going to use these and just fish plate the side of it. There's a lot of kids running around right now. I just came back. 
I came back to Dada. Okay. Because I almost thought you were doing it without me. Okay, and here we have the finished product. Never mind the cat, he thinks I built him a new house or something. Uh, but pretty basic. It'll work though, it'll hold the seat. Uh, give us nice and, something nice and stable to put the pedals and the seat on. Uh, this is angled so that the pedals are not flat. It'll be more like a firewall in a car when they're on that. And then the seat's gonna mount uh, to the front here. I'm not really worried about mounting the back of the seat. It's really just the front that needs to be down. And I would have probably boxed this in had I more scrap, but this is everything I had at the moment, so I just put it where I thought it was the most necessary. Um, of all the things I don't have laying around, I don't have the ability to focus my camera, apparently. Jeez. There we go. I didn't have any washers. Um, so this penny has now become my washer. Okay, when I mounted the pedals, uh, this is just going to sit against the wall. That way I can uh, still take them off, change them out, whatever. And to keep them from sliding forward, me, being the lack of washer person that I am, improvised, uh, yep, bottle caps. I'm going to tell myself that I did that because I didn't want to crush the plastic and they're flexible, but, you know. I think we all know that it's because I didn't have any washers and I was looking for justification. And there we go. Pedals are mounted. Okay, so here's what our base looks like uh, with the seat attached. Pedals mounted. Uh, pretty stable. All we have left to do now is put the steering wheel on. Now as far as the wheel goes, I have made one modification already and that is um, it has this cool sequential shifter over here and you can actually move this to the left side as well if you want to you know get right hand drive JDM drift style about it. But um, anyway there is this there's just a little nut on the bottom a little thumb screw nut so we take that guy off. eventually. All right. Took that off. Uh, I took this apart. There's a screw right here. That comes off. We need, that's the piece I needed. And I needed the bolt out of the inside. I made this at work. So that was a cool handbrake. Uh, similar to like a real drift car handbrake is which is what I was going for. So I didn't have a washer. So I took a quarter this time, made a washer. I know, could get arrested for all this money defacing. Anyway, take your custom washer, put it through here. Uh, line this up, it is kind of cogged. It has like a square shape in the bottom of it. Awkwardly stare in the distance while you're tightening this thing. Okay. And then now you have this, which I thought was pretty cool. It's got a nice feel to it. Uh, the positioning, that's where it's supposed to be. Anyway, yeah, it's got a cool feel to it. Uh, the positioning I feel is about right for a drift car, at least as close as I could get it with what this is. But I thought this was a cool little thing about this wheel and I'm take advantage of it. Uh, anyway, so now let's go ahead and put this thing on.
Okay, so here we are in Mudrunner. For some reason in Mudrunner, every time I have to go in, go to settings, uh, wrong button, go in, go to controls, blah, blah. There it goes. And then all of a sudden, when it does this, then you know it's good to go. Change to the Cherokee because Cherokees are the bestest. Everybody knows that. We are going to set our cockpit camera to this button. There we go. Escape. Cockpit camera. It does work, although it's a little hard to see what's going on. Just zoom just out past the windshield. Oh, there's the trail. Spin tires is a whole different way of using this uh, setup, as you can see. Say I hit that rock right there, it's going to want to yank the wheel out of my hand. Because I just kind of plowed right into it. Which it's a whole different way of feeling the game. So it's actually really cool in Mud Runner in a whole different kind of way than racing. We go out of the rig here. But it gives you a whole kind of accuracy that is. I don't know, it's definitely fun. All right, well, there you have it. Let's call it my. $65 sim rig. Uh, seat was 15 bucks at the junkyard, 45 bucks offer up, and scrap pile. 60, 45 plus 15 is not 65. I fail at mathing. $60. $60 sim rig. That, that's a little better math, anyway. But, okay, so I set this thing up and I was instantly like, I'm gonna set this up, we're gonna get in there, start rate, it's gonna be great. Off of the bat, it's frustrating because I sucked so bad. Uh, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I can hold my own with the controller. I'm pretty good with the controller. You switch to something like this, you are immediately terrible. Now, a little bit of practice, whatever else, you're gonna get better and better, and I feel like I am better now. Uh, it's much more enjoyable. But aside from that, it's still way more fun, even when you suck at it. Because, I don't know, it just feels so awesome. And if you love cars as much as I do, this is the only way to go if you're going to game seriously with car games, racing games, drifting games, whatever. Um, the Logitech Momo wheel for 45 bucks, it works really well. The force feedback is good. I did have to find the old drivers and stuff, which isn't that hard. And uh, I was happy with this thing. I was happy with the way it worked. Um, but once I got it down, you know, then I started playing with the drifting. And the drifting is where it falls on its face because it only goes yay far, which in most races, that's fine. But for drifting, you wanna really be able to throw that wheel back and forth for it to feel as much like a real drift car as possible. Um, so that being said, I have already bought a Logitech G920 wheel, which is the Xbox PC version. It has a full 900 degrees of rotation. And hopefully I'll have more videos on that and mods for that as well. Handbrake, sequential shifter, all stuff that I wanna do. This was a stepping stone for me, so I'm super glad that I did it. And this isn't one of those things I'm just going to get out of my system because this is a ton of fun and hopefully I'll have more videos on this kind of stuff coming up. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you liked the video, I'm going to sue that thing. I'm going to sue that thing. If you liked the video, do me a favor and uh, I'm going to do that typical YouTube thing where I say if you liked the video, hit like, subscribe. Even if you didn't, go ahead and do it. It helps me out. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But... Appreciate you watching the video. I hope to have some more up soon. Oh, and I've got some other mods that I've done to the newer wheel on my Instagram, at Travis Builds Things. Check that out. Um, stuff gets there quicker than it gets here just because this takes a while to put together. But anyway, thanks again. Hope to see you guys soon, and I appreciate it. Bye. I'm gonna edit this part out. Hmm? I'm gonna edit this part out. Okay. Okay. Of course you have. That's why we play racing games, right? So, 